Napoli and um, a valiant batting display on the final day to earn yourself a draw. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, well, first and foremost, I thought it was a fantastic game of cricket. Um, we played really well, what, for probably two and two thirds of the game, and they had an amazing session last night and one this morning. Um, look, we're a developing side, that's factual. You know, you look at the Middlesex side, all the internationals they have on the side, they open with two internationals, open with what well, they got three international bowlers, and probably Helm was the best bowler in the game. So, to, for us to start winning again, first you've got to stop losing. So I'm really proud of the guys and you know, to watch two 17 year olds battle it out just after lunch um, and then a, a debut turn like an Ari scored a run. So, yeah. And who knows, if this was a test match, if we would have managed to sneak 230, 240 ahead, it would have been a cracking game of cricket. Well, let me just ask you about the, the two debutants then on, on trial and Ari Carvalas and Brad Curry made an impact in very different kinds of ways. I thought, yeah, I mean, without saying they're on trial, <laughs> that's, um, they've been playing for our second team now uh, all the season. We've had an eye on them. We, it's been well documented this season. We've had a lot of injuries with bowlers, and they both deserved it with their attitude and their bowling in the second team. So they, I hope they didn't feel as though they were on trial, but obviously making your debut for Sussex at Lords is pretty special. And then Brad obviously getting his sixth for Harry getting a 50 and two for they performed outstanding. They exceeded your expectations, I imagine. I know they're good players, but to do that, that's something special. I, I always try and believe that everybody can perform to the best of their ability. Um, and I backed them to perform, and they did. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that you're a developing side. People talk about how young the side is. Middlesex is a very experienced side. I mean, Tim Mert is 41 nearly, so... Uh, it could have been a dad. <laughs> but how important, how important is this as a staging post for where you're at as a team, to see your young players really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that experience of Murta, Roland Jones, Robson, etc. Yadav, Stoneman, mm. Simpson, <laughs> you can go through. I mean, that's the thing. I, I said it probably in the first sentence I said. The first time, um, the first thing we did, this time last year we'd have lost this game. Uh, and that's where we're improving. You can't just do a magic pill and start winning again. That's factual, that's cricket. But what you have to do is stop the momentum of losing. And now we stop, we're starting to stop losing and competing in games. They would have been panicking when we were, they were behind the follow-on and then we had a few wickets. And then if we got a couple of quick ones then, we could have ended up making them follow on. That's a huge performance from a team. And that shows the importance of having a pajara in your side to have around our young batters. It's still my wish to have an overseas bowler as well so that he can impact the same thing on our young bowlers as well but before you start winning again you've got to stop losing yeah so you've got to walk before you can run yeah. the um obviously with people talked a lot about Jeshua Pajara and obviously Ali Orr's made a big impact at the beginning of the season as well. A little bit of a word on, on both Tom Clark and Tom Allsop and how well they did in this match. Oh, they, they don't not get mentioned at all in our changing room. Look Tom was what should I say, a bit of a crossroads in his career at Hampshire. We know he can play. We've made him feel welcome. We believe we're now, that's his third century this season. We believe there's a proper cricketer in there and we've just made him feel welcome. We just want the best version of Tom Allsop and he's scoring the runs. And Tom Clark, that this morning, what did he get, 54 out of 65 or something like that? He looked like a proper test cricketer. You know, I've asked him to open when he's been batting five and he made it look easy. Uh, there's no batter who would have played it that well and to score freely when it was such challenging um, batting conditions this morning overheads quality bowlers I thought he was outstanding and then finally what obviously you're not going to go through the players individually but what is your you want to take them to the next step so you're saying you're always asking them to do X Y and Z so what is the you talked about before you can start winning again you need to stop losing so what is the next step that you're going to ask them to take I think it's recognising um like I said, I think for two and a bit days, we didn't have a bad session. We were in the game all the time. It was that session towards when Roland Jones and Simpson were batting and they took the game away from us. And then this morning, so you, what you want to try and do is stop having, when you win games, you stop having bad sessions. And maybe in the past, we've had three or four bad sessions. You bring that down to three bad sessions, two bad sessions, and then one bad session. Until when you win a game, you don't then, have bad sessions. So it's, li it's gradually um, lessen the amount of uh, bad sessions you have. And just improving bit by bit is essentially... Bit by bit, yeah. because they're young and they're learning. And, you know, I looked at them 
for example, young Archie, I thought, bowled beautifully. It was only his last few overs. But, and I'm trying to impart on him, Archie, get on this, this end to have the big leg side boundary and then throw the ball up a little bit. They might hit you for six, but it might go straight up in the air. But he's 17 <laughs> and trying to get that message onto the pitch and trying to get that information. We can only then talk about it afterwards, but he will learn from that. And then he'll think, oh, been in this situation before, bigger boundary one side, they're looking to swipe, I'll go in outfield, I'll maybe use my pace variation rather than getting frustrated and emotional because he cares. He wants to be the best he can be. He got fast and then he got, kept getting hit for sixes and fours, whereas next time he'll go, ah, guess what, I've been here before, this is what I'll do. And it's learning on the job, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and is that, that's the best experience they could have, isn't it, really? Um, as long as you protect them, obviously, that's the thing. You don't want it to bring them down at any stage, but they are looked after, they are well coached, they're well cared for in every department by all the coaches, off the pitch, the physical staff. Um, we believe we're giving them the best grounding. We believe in five years time, something like Archie will only be 22. So spinners don't reach their peak, 26, 27, 28, 30. So he's 13 years away from reaching his peak. But by that, I, he's already played over 30 games for Sussex, age 17. That's a lot of cricket. And if you keep putting that into him, all these experiences in two or three years' time, you'll recognise them and go, ah, this is what I do. Did you see him bat? He's a proper batter. Mm. And he's Literally, got... serious technique, proper batsman. And he's got one of Sussex's best ever spinners to guide him, so, you know. Well, hopefully. Who's that? Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, look, obviously it comes from good stock. Dad played for Sussex, granddad played for Sussex, he's in a pretty good place. 